Hi friendly friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're working on the Essential Dolman Dress. Now this pattern comes for a kids version and adult version and it also has a doll version but today we're working on the kids slash adult version. I'm going to show you all the steps and I'm going to show you the different necklines, the differences between the, the adult and the kid sizing. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so I've got my pattern pieces laid out for the adult um, two-piece version. Now for the one piece, you will have one front and one back, but because I'm doing the two-piece to show you how to do the waistband, I've got a front skirt and a back skirt, and I've got a front bodice and a back bodice. I am doing the boat neck, which is an option that the adult bodice has. The uh, kids version comes with a crew neck, but the adult version has a um, boat neck and a scoop neck, which is like a crew neck, just a little bit lower um, and then I've got the facing for the neck uh, for the neck band for the boat uh, neck and I've got pockets for for a pocket <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put together the two piece and I'm going to show you how to do the boat neck and then at the end I'll show you how I I'm going to make another one and I'll just show you the, ver the uh, section where I add the crew slash scoop neck band just to show you the difference on that all right, we're gonna get started with our pocket. If you're adding pockets, you wanna have four of these, but I only have two because I'm only adding one pocket. And so that means that I'm only gonna add it to one side of my skirt. So I'm going to add the first pocket right sides together to my skirt. You want the pocket to be facing down towards the pattern, towards the hem. So it goes like a teardrop facing kind of I don't know, whatever way you wanna say that, but it's just kind of going this way. And so I've got that one on one side, I'm gonna sew with a stretch stitch here on the outer edge. And then I gotta make sure that I'm mirroring that pocket on the other side. So I gotta make sure that the skirts, if you place them on top of each other, this is the top of the skirt, this is the bottom, this are the right the sides that should be touching. So this is where I'm going to place that pocket, the other side of the pocket also facing, whoops, facing down towards the bottom and right sides together and place it right at the same spot that you place that other one. Then like I said, we're gonna go sew it right sides together. While I'm over at my machine, I'm going to grab my front bodice and my back bodice and we're gonna place them right sides together and sew the shoulders. I have this little clip here to tell me that this is my front piece and um, green means go, so that's why I have that green pin there. That way when it comes to attaching the neckband, um, it'll be easier. I know you can tell by the fact that the front neckband is a little bit lower than the back, I mean the neck area, but I still wanna um, have that extension because it can be a little bit difficult sometimes. All right, so we sew the pockets in and we'll put that aside for a minute. Um, and we sew the shoulders and what we're going to do is we're gonna grab here where the shoulder seam is and we're gonna give it a good steam so that that shoulder seam is nice and even. Steaming does make a big difference on garment making. It, um, I think it, make, it gives everything kind of like a finished look and it also helps you to notice if you missed any spots or anything like that when you're steaming. I didn't this time, thankfully. Okay, now we're going to prep the hem of the sleeve. On this dress you have like an exposed hem and it goes this way and it gives it like a really cute look. Obviously, it, you know, it, you're at liberty to change that look if you don't want it, but I'm gonna show you how uh, it's intended to look. Now for this part, for the adult, we're going to fold an inch and a half over. Um, for the kids, you will just be folding an inch. So that's one difference between the adult and the kid. Um, you'll do one and a half for the adult here, but you only do one inch for the kid's version. You're gonna give it a good steam. And then you're gonna fold it one more time, another half, an inch and a half, I'm sorry. So you're just basically folding over that inch and a half again. Or inch if you're doing the kid's version. Now this is just a memory crease, which means you're gonna unfold it again, but now you have these lines here that will help you hem in the next step. I'm gonna do the same for the other side. 
All right, now that that's done, we're going to fold it right sides together and sew those side seams. Remember, that was just a memory fold, so you're opening that up, opening that up and actually sewing that side seam. All right, we are also, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for my skirt. So I'm gonna grab my skirt, open it up. Now, if you have um, the full piece, obviously um, when you're putting the top together, it just goes straight down and around the pocket if you're doing pockets, but it won't be obviously separate. So it'll just be all straight one piece that you will just keep going down on the sides. But since I have the skirt and the top, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my skirt, place some right sides together on top. Oh. One part I did not do is to help your pocket sit a little bit nicer, you can steam your seam towards the pocket and put a little top stitch right there on the seam and that helps the pocket not poof out as much and keep the pocket hidden. Um, I did not do that step. I don't usually do that step on my pockets, uh, but it does help when I do it. I'm just... Sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. Tell me below if you do that step. Do you like to uh, top stitch or under stitch your pocket to keep it hidden? It also depends on like your fabric. If your fabric tends to stick out um, or stuff like that, then I would definitely do it. But I'm only doing the one pocket and I think it's gonna be fine. So I'm not doing that step. But by all means, if it's something that bothers you, like if your pocket usually sometimes sticks out, that is a very good way to keep that pocket from trying to come out and get in your way. So if you have a pocket, you will go down, around your pocket, and down. If you don't have a pocket, you will just go straight down. All right, now. The next thing I'm going to prep right now is my neckband. Like I said, for the adult pattern, there is a boat neck facing option. So I've got my boat neck facing option. This is my back. I'm gonna put, I like to put a little clip on it, even though when you put it against your bodice, um, it should match up. But I'm gonna put a clip on right here just to remember. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up your facings front and back and you're going to match up those side seams. So now you're kind of creating that facing um, neckband. Now for the kids version is a crew neck uh, version which is just like a higher neckline and uh, it's sewn the same way that the scoop version is sewn on the uh, on this pattern, on the adult pattern. So let me show you that real quick. So you're gonna sew right here those raw edges, right sides together. Um, I'm making another one for the crew neck and I, I did the same steps. I already sewed the sides on this one, which is the step we're doing working on right now. Uh, the shoulders, so this is gonna be my next one. I folded my, uh, my fold, my hem. Um, so for the neckband for this one, because this is the scoop of the adult, which is sewn the same way as the crew neck on the kids version, I'm going to grab the neckband and the first thing I'm going to do to help you uh, maneuver this neckband really nicely, you wanna do a memory crease, which is just folding it in half, wrong sides together and giving it a good steam because that makes it easier to maneuver when you're sewing it onto the neckline. I guess I should get my iron and stuff ready. So I will fold it wrong sides together and give it a good steam. And then I open it up and grab it right sides together and sew that raw edge. So that's how I'm gonna prep that neckband. So I'm gonna prep both neckbands. I'm gonna sew my sides of my skirts or my whole dress if it's together and the sides of my dress, my top. So it's, it's separate, so the top side seams, so the skirt side seams, if it's together, you're just sewing the whole thing and then the neckband. Okay, now <clears throat> let's work on the crew neck first. So what I'm doing is crew neck or scoop neck, whatever you, whichever you're working on. I've got my neck band here, I mean my neck area here, and I need, sorry, some little, uh, my little snips. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my neck band over that crease and make it right side, wrong sides together and I'm gonna go to the front so I'm just quartering that neck band and I like to do a little notch on there uh, 
but you don't have to. I just like to do that because it helps me to keep it even and then match the front and the back and go to the sides. When you're attaching a neckband, you do not want um, to attach the front and the back to be the same because you, as you can see, the front is lower, so it will take more neckband than the back. And if you put them just by the shoulders, and then it's gonna be uneven. Then we're gonna match up the shoulders and look for the front and back on the actual bodice, and then match up the front and back and get your sides. Now we're going to match up, right sides together, your quarter points. And now we're ready to go ahead and sew that neckband up. Now for my boat neck, I've got my bodice. I'm gonna just leave it inside out. I'm gonna grab my neckband. And as you can see, I have my little, my red bump right here, which tells me that's the back. That's how I marked it. And then green here, which tells me that's the front. So we're just gonna fit it right in and match up those side seams. Now this one should be exactly the same size as your neck band, as your neck opening. So you can just go to the side seams and then um, attach it to the, I mean, then match up the, the raw edges all the way around. So you're attaching right sides together, all that raw edge. So you're just placing them together. Should fit right in. All right, and you're gonna go sew that all the way around. All right, now for attaching our skirt, this is, I'm doing the elastic option here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find, here's my sides, I'm gonna find the half of my skirt and the half of my bodice. And I'm going to grab my skirt and I'm going to insert it into my bodice and match up those points. The side seams, the front, and the back. And if you have a fabric that you're using for the front, match up. Make sure you match up the front to the front and the back to the back. Mine doesn't really matter, so I'm just matching them up. All right, once they're matched up at that raw edge, you're going to sew them uh, an inch in, you're gonna mark an inch in and you're going to sew all the way around with a stretch stitch. You cannot use a serger for this part because you're going to need this seam allowance to create the casing. So we're just doing a straight stretch stitch an inch away from the edge. I'm probably gonna use a zigzag stitch for mine. You can use a triple stitch, you can use a lightning bolt stitch, whatever stitch you like for a stretch stitch or Oh, excuse my iron turning off. Or if you wanna use stretch thread and do a straight stitch, um, or use your cover stitch, whatever you wanna do right there, it is up to you. Once our facing is sewn on, we're gonna steam that seam towards the facing, and we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and put in a um, edge stitch right here. You want to top stitch it down so that your, you ha your facing doesn't try to come out of your neck when you're wearing it. <laughs> that sounds weird. Your facing doesn't try to come pop out. I'm doing the edge stitching from the wrong side just because I want to make sure it's catching the seam. Um, so that's why I like to do it this way. Now we fold that in, that stitching in, and we give it a good steam. Now, some fabrics are a little bit more annoying than others when it comes to this facing. So there's two things that you can do. Nah, I didn't steam that very well. I'll have to go back and do that. But you can come over here to the shoulder and top stitch it on the ditch right here so that it keeps it hanging down, it keeps it stable. Or you could also come over here and top stitch the bottom of the facing all the way around the neckline to help keep it in place. Um, I find that a lot of times once I just do the shoulders, it sits in place really nicely, but um, especially if I steam it nicely, this I didn't do a good job here. Um, so, But if you feel like your fabric is still being very, uh, 
annoying then you can go ahead and put in a stitch all the way around the outside right here where the, I don't know you probably can't see it but I can feel the fabric from the underside where the facing is you can top stitch it down all right now that this is sewn right here this is the casing we're going to carefully trim away the seam uh, the extra seam allowance from the body side um, now, if you're doing um, your drawstring, you will be you're doing the same exact steps right now. Um, you'll just have to add the interfacing and the grommets at a later point after we do this part right here before we close the um, before we close the casing. You'll have to add um, your little uh, interfacing right here and add your grommets before you sew it closed because obviously you won't be able to do it after or your um, buttonholes if that's what you're using. So I'm just carefully trimming this extra seam allowance. All right, now that that's trimmed, we're going to push the seam allowance towards the bodice. We're gonna steam it up towards the bodice, and then we're going to go and top stitch it down. So right here at the edge, we're going to top stitch that down all the way around and you want to um, you want to leave a like a two inch gap right here where you're gonna insert your elastic um, your uh, if you're doing drawstring you would go ahead and put in your facing on the front side in the middle of your bodice and then put in your grommets right here in between and then um, you could sew it all the way around and insert your casing what I really, my favorite way to do it though, is to actually do the elastic waistband, put in the elastic, well, put in the grommets and stuff like that, then put in the elastic, and then um, and then the um, put in the drawstring above the elastic so that the drawstring is not the only thing pulling it close. You still have the elastic bringing it in, but then you have the look of the drawstring. Sometimes what I'm going to do with my dress, I'm going to do the elastic, not with this one, with my other version, because this one is a little bit more dressy, so I'm just doing the elastic but on the other one I'm doing the elastic and then I might just go ahead and do a full drawstring while I'll just stitch on the outside stitch the drawstring back and forth right here and it'll just be dangling it won't do anything to my bodice but it, then I don't have to put grommets in and all that so that is all up to you what you want to do so I'm going to go and top stitch this down leaving a gap where I'm gonna insert my elastic All right, so that casing is finished, completed. We're gonna grab our elastic, which you can just measure your waist, uh, the wearer's waist, and like subtract two inches is what I usually do, one to two inches, depending on how tight you want it. And then you're just gonna feed it right through where you left that opening and go all the way around and come around the other side. Make sure your elastic is not tangled up. I'm gonna clip my elastic here at the beginning on both ends. And I'm gonna make sure that my elastic is not all tangled up before I sew it together. Because then it, it'll bug me if it's all tangled up, but I don't want it to go in yet. Um, and I wanna lose it, so I wanna, that's why I clip it down first. Make sure, feel it with your fingers and make sure it's not all twisted. All right, that feels like it's doing its job correctly. So then I'm gonna grab them and overlap them and so zigzag stitch them together right here, fit them through all the way and close that gap. While I'm over there, I'm gonna grab my sleeve, fold it over that crease that we created earlier so we can give it a hem. Oops. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> Remember this one has um, like more of a the exposed look. So, well, I guess I could turn it around but you'll be able to see more of the exposed look. We're gonna fold it once and then we're gonna fold it the next time so that that seam, that edge is encased but you can still see the exposed edges and you're gonna hem that, you're gonna hem it right along you know the top edge and then the bottom 
gets hem with your half an inch seam allowance, hem allowance, sorry. So you're gonna fold that and hem. I'm gonna go do all those things and we'll be done and I'm gonna show you what my dresses look like. We are done and I love how this dress turned out. I think it looks super cute. I've got this one little pocket here on the side. I have a question though. So this fabric is a little bit dressier and with the neck facing and everything, I think it's maybe like some um, higher wedges or something like that. And I'm wondering if the fact that my fabric is, the, the wrong side is white, if it's distracting from the dress, but the cool thing about this is that if you did not want to hem it the wrong side, you can always hem it the right side and still have a super cute look. So what do you all think? Do you think that I should hem it in so that you can't see it? Or do you think that this adds a little bit of more like a, you know, transitional, um, piece right there. I feel like you could transition this into like wearing some flats and like uh, wearing a little uh, a jacket or something like that. It's, it, it's less dressy. So what do you think? Let me know below um, what you think I should do with this particular dress. So I'm going to show you also the other version. This is the um, facing version um, and then I'll show you the version that I did with the crew neck. All right, friends, here's my second version, and Bo wanted to come in and say hello to you all and um, show off the second version with me. This is more of a fall, ready-to-wear look. I feel like um, it's more sporty, so the sleeves look amazing with it. I just love it. This is a... Um, this fabric is a um, sweater knit fabric, and so I just love the texture of it. I love how it fits. It is so nice and comfy. I can just throw it on and head out the door. So I love that this dress, you can dress it up a little bit with a dressier fabric or dress it down. There's different lengths. I just went with the same length this time. He wants to play. I just went with the same length this time, but you have different lengths of the skirt. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Go grab this pattern, come back, sew it up with me. Tell me about the sleeves from the other dress and come show us your finished result over at our Facebook page. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Go sew. And I'll see you next time. Bye.